The battle line of fortresses is powerful, and as I said a couple of episodes ago, I really have found my fortress vibe. It's just, there's something beautiful to seeing nothing but fortress move in. And by leveling those, I'm hoping to be less vulnerable to uh, the opponent's hackers. Because if I had lower level fortresses, the hackers could hack them easier and then hack the next one. This way, it's basically an all or nothing, and I'm hoping to keep it at uh, nothing for my opponent. He has more and more marksmen, and uh, in these quantities, they are actually doing a lot of damage. He also now has elite marksmen, so that further amplifies damage. We'll see how this turn, uh, how this round turns out. Hacker shield about to get broken, but these hackers are level two. I think they were level two from the get-go. I think they dropped at that level. Scorpion still very good to get rid of uh, uh, the enemy tanks and then also do a lot of damage to the enemy Balkans. However, this Scorpion, it can level but it gets destroyed pretty quickly by the combined firepower of the Marksmen, one of which has reached level 5. However, now all of the opponent's chaff has already gone down and um, there still is some fortresses to get rid of. Basically, it is a fight which unit can scale better. The Fortress with Mass Fortress or the Marksman with Elite Marksman. Now, in this specific round, it looks like I'm gonna win the fight because the Stormcallers were just too numerous after all of the Fortresses went down and some of the Marksmen went down. However, as you can see, the Marksman leveling is definitely going on. Both pick the Tech Specialist. I also lost my shield in the middle, it seems. Now I do have the sustain against my enemy's force. I can get rid of the chaff and then my force still survives with a bunch of tanks. And if they get into range of the marksmen, they will absolutely annihilate these marksmen. I'm also putting some levels on the storm colors. In the time where war factories were spawned in like half of the matches, that I would consider that an absolute madman's move. I'm also now purchasing some wasps. Um, in retrospect, I probably would have put them further back because uh, they might get destroyed by these facts. The opponent is going for the best partner. So uh, now there is a marksman for every Vulcan. It's not that many, but uh, I guess with two attacks on the marksman, it should start adding up. Also, this Vulcan has a level, so it spawns a level 2 uh, marksman. My opponent goes for Mustangs, but he goes for Mustangs with a Missile Interceptor. I guess there isn't that much purpose for these Mustangs otherwise. This is a double-edged sword. I'm starting to just blow... Oh, ah, okay, that's what I was doing. I was blowing these, mark, uh, uh, these fangs out of the way, hoping that I could maybe finish it this turn if I do a really, really stellar round. That's why I also went into wasps. So the wasps definitely are doing a lot against the um, against the uh, uh, marksmen by being air chef. The um, yeah, the mustangs that were dropped against my storm callers, uh, they don't do all that much. It seems. I start pushing through. But it becomes very visible that even at closer ranges, the firepower of my opponent's marksmen is still a lot. That said, I have a level 3 fortress here that is at like 80% health. And I have a tower debuff. We'll see how much survives here. One mark... Okay, no, he turns around. He could have easily gotten the tower, in theory. As you can see, the damage that these marksmen are pushing is just... A lot. I survive with, uh, yeah, three storm callers, despite having that high of a fortress so late into the turn. Next round, Overlords, War Factory, Melting Point, Wraith. I think all of these were or would be decent choices for my opponent. He goes for the Melting Point. So what do I do? I don't even remember what I do or what I did. We are, by the way, on round nine now, and, um, it's still a lot of health on the board. That said, Mass Fortress, you can win big, you can lose big. My opponent's Melters are uh, going to swing it in the favor of my opponent, I think. 
he went for the EMP missiles to break the shields and to disable techs that I potentially have, but I really haven't bought a lot of techs. I have Splash on the Stormcrawlers, which I really like a lot more uh, uh, most of the time actually than going for fire recently. I have my orbital strike again which is in my favor. Both players have their shields again. My entire front line is also shielded so I wonder how much an orbital strike would have actually done. It seems that he's dropping more chaff and I think also more mustangs. But his mustangs are kinda not really all that amazing. I also go for incendiary. I think I want or I think I wanted all the chaff clear I could possibly get out of these storm callers. In retrospect, really risky if a war factory drops uh, uh, on in the same turn to go for that. Now, how much w uh, good will come out of my force this time around? He has more mustangs. I don't exactly have more missiles. What I also have is uh, more levels on the fortresses and some overlords, but both the fortresses and the overlords get countered by the melting points. Uh, uh, unless I win a chaff war so hard that, uh, like on this side, uh, my force just pushes in. On this side it's not looking all that hot. One of my fortresses gets hacked and instantly gets blasted. The hacker goes, uh, not the hacker, the, um, what's it called? The scorpion goes down pretty quickly. That said, I now get a tower debuff, and my opponent here is not shooting things that really matter a lot. My fortresses are pretty low health. Vulcan here is still destroying, uh, is starting to destroy the storm callers, because this Vulcan uh, has a range of 150 against the storm callers with 180. That's all, the, all of a sudden not that much. However, it starts looking like my opponent's marksmen are starting to outscale my fortresses because a lot more survive on this round than on the previous round. I would have extended Stormcaller range here, but do I want to nerf the damage of my Stormcallers even further? I instead opt for Rhino Assault. Because I think at this point it starts being worth to just uh, distract your opponent's marksmen even if they have to turn around for half a second. Um, they start hitting my fortress barriers and do damage immediately. So while I usually am very averse to picking up something like a Rhino Drop this late into the game, uh, this is one of the games where I make an exception. He's dropping more of the Melters. I am going for Rhino uh, for Rocket Punch. It definitely starts being worth it. The punch should g help get rid of all of these giants because, uh, well, the punch of a level 3 fortress is doing uh, 45,000 damage, uh, uh, 45,000 health damage. So if one of these level 3 fortresses throws a punch on a level 1 melter, that level 1 melter should instantly be destroyed. This here now is a level 4 fortress with 270,000 health and change. So unless a melting point locks onto, or the combined firepower of all of these marksmen, uh, this is a level 8 marksman, which is pushing 50,000 damage per shot. And look at all of the stuff turning around for like uh, 2 seconds, I would estimate, that I gained from that. That is what the Rhino was here to accomplish. My crawlers are going through the fire because they also have subterranean now, which helps against his chaff clear. His chaff clear is the Vulcans, but they might just take a little moment longer to get this done. My fortresses push in and start taking out the hackers, which is amazing, and now the fists are starting to fly. There's a decent number of fortresses surviving. Yeah, look at that. The melters being one shot, basically. And by the looks of it, I'm starting to push in on the battle line of marksmen in the rear. The Scorpion here doing still absolutely amazing work tanking. Tower here goes down and now I have a high level fortress and not a lot standing in its way. I have actually two high level fortresses and this one is level 4 with an Amco and go to level 5. That's actually, yeah, it's, it's over 420,000 HP. I end up winning the turn and by quite a margin. That said, my opponent has lost almost no health in previous rounds, so even taking this amount of damage, he now only has a bit less than I do. Next chance for my opponent to shut down my uh, Stormcrawlers, 
War Factory being offered. In theory also high level Rhino, but I think even a level 8 Rhino against these. Like, this is going to be most likely a level 5 Fortress with Amcor. It's going to be insane. He opts for the War Factory. I'm still thinking about what I should do. He buys a second War Factory. No doubt my opponent is going all in. And he wants to finish this. War Factories have massive health pools. Even after all of these nerfs. I go for the Rhino, sell it and start leveling. So now we have a level 5 Fortress here with uh, almost 530,000 health. That is insane. Like that is an absolutely insane amount of health. I drop more fortresses and I also get literally everything down here. I don't even know where to put these fortresses reasonably. I'm going for fang production because at this point a third tech into these fortresses is worth it. There's not any air unit on my opponent's side in theory. I guess he could have done some wasp play. Uh, but I'm not sure if he could have dropped strong enough wasps to really do something. And I won't die to just wasps, I think. Anyway, the probably final round, round number 11, is underway. The melters lock onto the barriers, but they don't get to shoot at the barriers for a long time because the marksmen already get them down. I am apologizing a bit for the lag, uh, for the reduced frame rate, so I'm reducing the game speed a bit. That hopefully will help. And uh, as you can see, the fight in the middle is uh, progressing slowly. On the outsides, my fortresses are now moving in on the war factories. And these are, like even this, is a level 3 fortress, which does 21,000 damage per shot. And an overlord here, which also does a lot of damage. And each time one of the fists goes flying, that basically seals the deal for something. Even under all of these conditions, uh, I am with reduced speed. You can see that the fortress is lasting a decent time here. Because it is just so high level. I have broken through the middle. Fist takes out multiple marksmen at a time. I underestimate how much of an AOE this has. Scorpion is starting to hit some very important targets. Melters and Vulcans don't have that good of a target. And there's a significant force moving in. And now I get additional fang production against nothing but uh, uh, marksmen. And that means that in the end, this turns out to be a win in round 11. Yeah, Mars Fortress carried the day. Um... I was really unsure how to fight Vulcan Marksmen, to be honest. Because with Vulcan Phoenix, of course, the big difference is that Phoenixes fly, so you can hit the Phoenixes with anti-air barrage. You just annihilate the enemy's DPS, and you take on the Chaff Clear with something that Chaff Clear can't clear. But even so, the mass fortress, and in this case, actually mass upgraded fortress as well, like there is uh, one fortress that was stuck at level 1, Probably because it got locked onto most likely by uh, this high level marksman, which was doing over 50,000 damage each shot. Uh, other than that, all of these fortresses leveled. And this fortress with, uh, would have been level 6 uh, with the amp core. Uh, I think that thing was just super scary. Nothing short of the melting points could even contest with it. Even, uh, and I guess the high level marksman fire all combined on it. Yeah, these marksmen, you shouldn't underestimate how much damage they do, but you also shouldn't underestimate how much health the fortresses have. Photon emission definitely helped a lot, I think. Especially against EMP. Yeah, I think I liked this match. Simply because it... Uh, I was unsure how to fight my opponent's unit composition, but it turns out Mass Fortress counters almost everything. <laughs> if you can get it going, it's amazing. Anyway, thanks everyone for watching and listening, and until next time.